presents No Way Out of Texas. What is up, everybody? This is your Italian god, Ant, and I am your current WWE pay-per-view champion and current co-AEW pay-per-view champion, and you are taking our I2 Years recap series. I am flying solo on this mission here, and I'm excited for you guys to uh, check us out on our new expedenture. So... We are covering WWF No Way Out of Texas in your house. They were live in Houston, Texas. The event took place on February 15th, 1998. And it was a decent show. But before we dive into the show, I want to just go over a couple of pop culture moments and some stuff that was happening around this time. We're going to go over the top five movies in the United States of America at the time. Number five, As Good As It Gets. I mean, number four is Sphere. Number three is Good Will Hunting. Number two, The Wedding Singer, which is one of my favorites. And number one movie in America in February 1998, Titanic. Still taking over the lead. Our top 10 songs in the United States of America. Coming in at number 10, Been Around the World by P. Diddy. Number nine, No, No, No by Destiny's Child. Number eight, A Song for Mama by Boys to Men. Number seven, I Don't Ever Want to See You Again by Uncle Sam. Number six, How Do I Live by Leanne Rhymes. Number five, Truly Madly Deeply by Savage Garden. Number four, Together Again by Janet Jackson. Coming at number three, and this is the first time making it on the charts, Getting Jiggy With It by Will Smith. And number two, Nice and Slow by Usher. Coming in at number one, number one song in the United States of America in February of 98 is My Hearts Will Go On by Celine Dion. That rhymes out of time. So that is happening here in the world in terms of music and film. And now we are going to talk about all things WWE, No Way Out of Texas, 1998. And we start off the pay-per-view with a special tag team match. We have the artist formerly known as Goldust, who people are calling Maryland Dust, and Marvelous Mark Marrow with Sable and Luna Vachon taking on the headbangers. And of course, Goldust comes out dressed up as Marilyn Manson, who oh, beautiful people, beautiful people. Uh, before the match starts, Marvelous Mark Marrow says there's only room for one beautiful lady. And he tells Sable to leave ringside, which Sable does. The match starts and Mark Merrill punches Mosh and delivers an elbow. Mero, Mosh then nails a splash in the corner and clotheslines Mark Merrill to the outside of the ring. Mosh suplexes Drasher off the top rope onto Goldust, but Mark Merrill breaks it up. Mark Merrill nails a knee lift to Thrasher. Luna attacks Thrasher outside and Goldust drops Thrasher onto the steps and Thrasher is now busted open. Goldus holds Mosh as Mark Merrill punches away at Mosh. Goldus then punches away at Mosh's head, causing more blood to come out of Mosh's head. Merrill then has wrist tape and he chokes Thrasher with the tape. Merrill then nails a sit out power bomb, but Mosh breaks it up. Thrasher counters a TKO into a DDT. The headbangers nail a flap jack to Goldus. Luna then drops Thrasher on the top rope and then Sable walks down to the ring. Mark Mero nails a TKO to Mosh, but Sable and, but then all of a sudden, Mero and Goldus have to separate Sable and Luna from fighting because Sable confronts Luna at ringside, and then Mosh rolls up Mark Mero to get the win for the headbangers. After the match, Sable yells at Luna, and the two are kept apart. So this is a great opening tag match. I didn't expect a lot from it. But the headbangers show they were a great team. This pairing between Mark Marrow and Goldus is eventually going to come to a head. But it's cool to see the beginning formation of this team and seeing Sable. Wow, beautiful lady coming down. I'm excited to see that. Next, we have the WWE European Champion Owen Hart backstage, and he says he's going to bust Triple H's legs tonight. We have our next match, and Sonny is the guest ring announcer for this. The WWE light heavyweight title is on the line. The light heavyweight champion, Taka Michinoku, defending against Pantera, which is Panther. Before the match starts, too sexy, Brian Christopher walks down to the ring. 
Pantera nails a planchet to the outside. Michinoku jumps on the ropes and nails a springboard splash to the outside on Pantera. Pantera nails a reverse hurricane rod out off the apron to Taka Michinoku. And then Pantera nails a suicide dive into the railing. Pantera then nails a backbreaker and applies a submission to Michinoku's back. Pantera backdrops Taka to the outside and lands a swan taunt to Michinoku's back outside of the ring. Pantera then nails an elbow, an elbow drop to the back and a moonsault, and Pantera gets a two count. Taka Michinoku then nails a flying knee to Pantera's neck, and then a missile drop kick to the back of Pantera, and then Taka nails a Michinoku driver for the win, and Taka retains the light heavyweight title. After the match, um, Taka Michinoku takes out both Jerry the King Waller and Brian Christopher with the plancha, and he escapes the ring. Um, it's cool to see these two men go at it. This is probably a better high-flying match between these guys. Um, it's the first time seeing them go at it one-on-one. -on -one. It was a good match. It was a good second match to the show, a good light heavyweight championship match. Not a lot to talk about, but it was a good match. Next, we see the AOL interview with Cactus Jack and Team Saw Charlie. They'll be in the main event later on tonight. We then move on to our special tag match, the Godwins taking on the Quebecers. And the match is a stalemate to start. Pierre nails a drop to a hold to Henry Godwin. Henry nails a double clothesline and a shoulder breaker to Jack. Phineas drops Jack with a spine buster and a leg drop and gets a two count. Phineas then nails a headbutt and he punches Jack into the ropes. Jack nails a reverse elbow to Henry. And then Henry nails a huge clothesline and gets a three count. And then after the match, the Godwins nail a slop, nail the Quebecers with slop bucket shots to the face. Very, very... Um, interesting to see these two teams go at it. It was a random special attraction match. The buildup was that the Quebecers had stolen the Godwins um, slot buckets and the Godwins were mad. And that was pretty much the storyline with that. Next, we have our NWA North American title match, the NWA North American champion, Jeff Jarrett with Jim Cornette taking on Bradshaw and Bradshaw attacks Jeff Jarrett with his chops. Bradshaw then bounces Jarrett and Jim Cornette's heads into one another. Jeff Jarrett nails a missile drop kick and gets a two count. Jim Cornette chokes Bradshaw with a racket, and Bradshaw nails a roll up and gets a two count. Bradshaw chops away at Jarrett. That's when Cornette hits Bradshaw's knees with a racket, and Jarrett attacks the knee. Bradshaw misses a clothesline, and Jarrett lands a DDT. Bradshaw nails a fall away slam and nails a power bomb. He tosses Jim Cornette and sends Jim Cornette into Jeff Jarrett. However, Jeff Jarrett hits Bradshaw with a racket, and the referee calls for disqualification win for Bradshaw. After the match, though, Bradshaw nails all the NWA wrestlers with the tennis racket. And uh, he slams Jim Cornette until Barry Windham makes the save. And NWA leave Bradshaw laying until the Legion of Doom come out and make the save, helping Bradshaw sending NWA packing. NWA doesn't last much longer, but it is interesting to see them um, get involved in this match. And it was a good match. Pretty decent. Nothing special, but it was okay. Next, Triple H and China are backstage. They say everyone wants to be in DX. There's no wrestler on this planet that can take Shawn Michaels' place. Tonight will be a handicap match. The WWF officials can add anybody they want to the team, but DX is not picking a member to join their match. Doc interviews a nation of domination, and he asks to talk to the leader, and The Rock tries to talk, but Farouk ends up taking control, and you can see there's dissension among the nation of domination. We next have our war of attrition match, the nation of domination. To get on the team of Ken Shamrock, I met Johnson, and the Disciples of Apocalypse. Dealer Brown nails a spinning heel kick to Skull. Skull nails a neck breaker. Ken Shamrock nails a spinning elbow to Dilo. Chains nails a big boot and a slam to Kama. Henry calls Ahmed and AJ comes in. Mark Henry with blows to, to Ahmed Johnson's back, and Ahmed body slams Mark Henry. Ahmed nails a modified slam. To D'Lo, D'Lo nails a frog splash to Ahmed Johnson's legs far in the corner. Farouk tackles Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed nails a spine buster. Ken Shamrock with a drop kick to Farouk. And The Rock DDTs Ken Shamrock and gets a two count. The Rock then sends Shamrock into D'Lo and Mark Henry's boots. Kama misses a running splash in the corner. And the D'Lo away nail a double clothesline to Kama. Skull chops D'Lo and nails a frog elbow to Skull. There's a people's elbow to Skull. Skull clothesline, The Rock down. The Rock then nails a low blow and a punch to Skull. The Nation are full and controlled Skull in the ring. D'Lo misses a flying moonsault. All eight men fight in the ring. Ken Shamrock then nails a belly-to-belly -to, -belly to The Rock. 
and he applies the ankle lock and the rock taps out. After the match, the rock gets in Farouk's face and pushes him. Farouk then punches D'Lo and tries to go after the rock. Farouk tells the rock to get in line and the nation then do a salute. So the team of Ken Shamrock, Ahmed Johnson, and Dua get the win. A lot of action in that match. Pretty much is showing dissension between the nation domination, which will lead into WrestleMania. But this is a great match. A lot of action. It wasn't bad. It was a good match. Next, we have Vader taking on Kane with Paul Bearer. Kane clotheslines Vader and sends Vader into the railing. Kane then punches Vader on the apron and bounces Vader's heads off the ring steps. Vader then punches Kane many times and sends Kane into the ring post outside. Kane nails a flying clothesline and gets a two count. Kane suplexes Vader and Kane jumps off the top rope with a blow to Vader's neck across the ropes. Kane DTs Vader and Vader nails a splash in the corner. Vader clotheslines Kane and hits a splash. Vader nails a moonsault, but Kane sits up. Vader uses fire extinguisher on Kane, but and he power bombs Kane. But Kane is able to get up, nail a close choke slam and a tombstone, and get the three count win. After the match, Kane grabs a wrench and he nails Vader in the face with the wrench, and Vader is tortured out. So a lot of brawling, a lot of action here in this match. Got a drink of my soda. Sorry about that, but it was a good match to see Vader and Kane go at these two behemoths and what's going to happen next. All right, we're at our main event, No Way Out of Texas, the non-sanctioned match. We have the team of Stone Cold, Cactus Jack, the WWF European Champion, Owen Hart, and Shane Saw Charlie, taking on the team of Triple H, the WWF Tag Team Champions, the New Age Outlaws, and member Savio Vega with China. Stone Cold nails Billy Gunn, the road dog, and Triple H with a trash can lid to start the match. Stone Cold then hits Triple H with a broom and chokes him with it. Stone Cold breaks the broom over Triple H's back. Owen Hart suplexes Billy Gunn through a table and applies a sharpshooter. Billy Gunn attacks Stone Cold with a lid and Savio Vega hits Charlie with the lid. Triple H nails Cactus Chainsaw Charlie many times with a trash can and then nails a DT on the lid and Owen Hart breaks the count. Owen Hart applies a sharpshooter on Triple H. Road Dog power bombs Chainsaw Charlie through two chairs. Billy Gunn then nails a pile driver to Chainsaw Charlie on the lid and gets a two count. Road Dog then suplexes Chainsaw Charlie on top of a trash can lid, and Stone Cold then tosses the trash can at Billy Gunn. Triple H hits Chainsaw Charlie with a chair twice. Cactus Jack then takes control for the team, but Billy Gunn DTs Cactus Jack outside of the ring. Billy Gunn throws steps at Cactus Jack in the face. Savio Vega then wraps barbed wire around Cactus Jack's body. And then Savio Vega puts it around Cactus Jack's mouth. And then Savio sends Cactus Jack into a chair and he nails Cactus Jack with a chair shot. And then the ending comes after Billy Gunn accidentally nails the road dog with a steel chair. Stone Cold is tagged in and he cleans house. And Stone Cold nails a stunner on the road dog and gets a three count. After the match, Stone Cold Steve Austin then nails a stunner on China after China comes in and shoves Stone Cold. This is a great pay-per-view of the Attitude Era, beginning to show more and more of their darker side in WWE. A lot of stuff happening. It wasn't the greatest pay-per-view, but there was definitely some standout matches. For me, the better matches were the, the opening tag match. I enjoy the War of Attrition. The main event was great. A lot of good stuff happening with Noya of Texas. We will be back with our next episode coming. It will be Monday Night Raw. Well, actually, Raw is War. It's a special Saturday edition from February 16th, 1998. And um, I definitely recommend you checking up, out the recap. And we will see you soon. With that, be safe. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.